Hi, my name is Adam Youngblood. Thanks for watching my video blog. I'm with AHEAD. I'm a technical architect specializing in automation orchestration and everything relating to the cloud. In my last video blog, we went over the high level look and feel as well as the feature functionality of the new Azure integration into vRealize Automation. In this vlog, we're going to get into some of the really cool stuff that you can do with VRA, VRO, and Azure. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to jump over to the Design tab. We're going to drill back into that X as a Service blueprint that VMware provides out of the box. So if you recall from the last vlog, the out of the box X as a Service blueprint is uneditable. So you can see the icons here cannot be selected. What does that actually mean? An X as a Service blueprint refers to a VRO workflow or many VRO workflows. So I can't actually get into this blueprint to say, I want to reference another VRO workflow. So what does that actually mean in practice? Well, in practice, when I kick this blueprint off through the catalog, it goes out to VRO, kicks off a specific VRO workflow. So let's actually jump over to VRO real quick. So I'm now in the vRealize Orchestrator Fat Client. I'm gonna go over to the Design tab, and we're gonna drill down through system, vRealize Automation, Endpoint to Azure, and you can see five workflows here. Allocate, create, deallocate, delete, and generate Azure machine name. So these five workflows are the workflows that that X as a Service Blueprint refers to. So let's say I wanted to do something really cool around extensibility like IP address management, change controls, IPS IDS, tagging, you wanted to add a disk, you wanted to do something outside of of what this X as a Service Blueprint allows you to do. The way you'd normally do that is come in here and actually modify this workflow. But let's take a look right up here. You can see that the pencil icon is also missing. You cannot click that. So that means we cannot edit this workflow. Now, in tail what that means is that there's no way to edit this at all. Once I kick this off, once this is exposed to the catalog, once I create a blueprint, and execute that, there is no way to modify what's going to happen. So it's always going to go out to Azure, it's going to create the VM you know, based on the options that you selected, and it's going to return that VM back to you. So you can't actually do the IP address management uh, and all that other really cool stuff. So I had to actually do a little bit of, uh, I had to get in the database, kind of figure some stuff out, but I was able to actually copy this blueprint. So let's drill into this real quick and take a, take a look to see what it looks like. So this is key right here. This is what I was talking about, the component life cycle. So you can see the, the first couple pieces that allocates the Azure Virtual Machine. Again, that's that workflow. If I jump back over to VRO, you can see allocate Azure Virtual Machine, create, deallocate, delete, uh, et cetera. So you can see those in regards here, allocate, create, delete, and deallocate. And I can actually edit a couple of these. Um, but I couldn't get this to work, even though I was able to copy this. If I click, if I click finish here, it'll throw some errors saying a service blueprint with the same name exists. Well, of course it does. That's I just clicked edit. I wanted to edit this. Of course the name exists. Even if you change it, it still it throws another error. So how do you get around this? The first step is to go to VRO. Take all of these workflows and copy them. So make duplicates of them. You can do that. If you just right click on it, you can see duplicate workflow. Create your own directory, uh, whatever your folder structure looks like. I'm going to jump over to mine. So you can see here, I just, I kept the same name, but just added dash advanced to them. So once you have those copied, you can jump back over to VRA. Cancel out of this guy. You can do new X as a service blueprint. Select that workflow that you just copied. Let me drill down, go to Helper, and you're going to want to select Create Azure Virtual Machine, not to Allocate. You want to select Create Azure Virtual Machine. I'm not going to actually create this. I'm going to go back, so let me click, click Cancel. But as you step through that, you're going to name it some very simple things. It's going to come out looking like this. So you're going to have a blueprint form with a bunch of information, provision resources, and Azure Virtual Machine, and then the component lifecycle. When you actually create it, it's just going to have the provisioning workflow. You want to go in there and update the allocate workflow with your allocate uh, advanced workflow, your destroy advanced, as well as your deallocation advanced. And then you can give it a category as well. As of right now, there is no update workflow. I'll get into that in a future video blog. 
So if we go back to the blueprint form, you can see there's a ton of information here. I won't get too deep into this. This can be left as is, but it can also be customized, which is really cool. So once we're finished up with this X as a service blueprint, just click finish on that, it'll save. And you now have an X as a service blueprint linked to your custom VRO workflow. And if you notice, when I click on this create Azure virtual machine, I can, that pencil is there, so now I can edit this workflow. So if I go back to VRA, what you're going to want to do now is actually go over to the design canvas, go over to blueprints, create a new blueprint, so you can click new there. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click my blueprint that I created, it'll look exactly the same. And what you'll notice is on the left, not only do you have Azure Virtual Machine, but you also have Azure Virtual Machine with VRO. So that's what I named mine, Azure Virtual Machine with VRO. You could name it Azure Virtual Machine Extended Lifecycle or Day 2 Operations or just Azure Virtual Machine number two. Take that element and drag it onto the canvas. It's gonna look just like the, the stock Azure Virtual Machine. There's a couple extra fields that VMware hides that this does not hide. Um, you can go through there, you can completely customize it either through, you know, you can, you can add things here. So you can see, you know, advanced settings, uh, you can set the value statically, or you can actually do this through the X as a service uh, blueprint designer. Once you have all the settings satisfactory, click finish. I'm not going to, because I don't want to save any changes that I've done, but click finish. It will save your blueprint. You then want to go to administration and you want to actually publish that catalog item. So let's jump back into that X as a service blueprint and talk some more about extensibility around doing some really cool things that enterprises need. They almost always need tags when you're talking about public cloud. They almost always have some type of IPAM solution. Even if you're doing dynamic, something to track IP addresses. Maybe you want to create change controls. Maybe you have a CMDB you want to update. Maybe there's an IPS IDS scan. There's all this really cool stuff that we can do now because we've separated out. We have our own blueprint. We've separated out that VRO workflow. So what we can do is we can go to back to X as a service blueprints. We can click that X as a service blueprint. We can go over to component lifecycle. And if you've noticed under the allocation workflow, it's no longer a dash advanced. I have a pre-provision dash Azure workflow. So let's jump over to VRO and take a look at that. So what that actually is, is it's just a wrapper workflow. So if I go down to wrappers here, you'll see the pre-provision dash Azure workflow over to the schema. And all that is, is it, it's just a high level wrap. We're still using that allocate virtual machine dash advanced. If I actually click the I there, it's still the allocate virtual machine dash advanced workflow that I created. Now what we can do is anything before or after it. So you can see here, create change ticket. So what I'm doing here is I'm reaching out to our service now change ticketing system, creating that change control, then actually going and creating that Azure virtual machine and then actually tagging that Azure Virtual Machine as you can see here. This can be done at any of those steps. So let's say you wanted to do something for the delete. You could do the exact same thing. Create another wrapper workflow, use this same delete Azure Virtual Resources, drag that onto that new canvas, and then do things like delete the IP address, delete it from IPS IDs, delete it from the antivirus system, delete firewalls, delete load balancers, whatever you might want to do. Obviously, create a change control before you initiate all those deletes and track those deletes as you step through it. At the very end of that is when you actually want to delete that Azure Virtual Machine. So you just drag this canvas to the very end, have all those tasks before it, and it would do the exact same thing. You would then jump back to VRA. Under this destroy workflow, you just click the little, little pencil there. You would go down to the folder where you save that new wrapper workflow. So you'd select that new wrapper workflow, you click submit, and as you can see, it's updated. So to me, this is really cool. This takes the Azure integration to the next level. You're now able to do the full lifecycle management, pre-provision, post-provision, and then full retirement using this process. Thanks a lot for watching my video blog. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for my future vlogs. I'm gonna do some other really cool stuff around lifecycle management, as well as some really cool day two operations. Thank you.